Welcome back to another episode of the Strive for 25 podcast. And I've got an amazing guest on today, Beth Penny. And she's got a day job. And she also has an Etsy store that she's been growing and building. And we're going to dig into Etsy and how this works and why and how and what people can make money out there as a side hustle. So Beth, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So let's just get out of the way. What's the name of your store? Where can they find you? Yeah, my store is Casey You Later. C-A-S-E-Y You Later. Okay. What are you saying? What does that mean? Can you say it again? What Casey is it? You Later. So I used to play roller derby professionally, and that was my roller derby name. My maiden name is Casey. So it was a name that I replied to, and Casey Dio was already taken. So cool, cool. So what's the what's the store all about? What are you doing out there? I started originally just trying anything. Like my first product was a t-shirt that said cult leader. (laughs) As strange as that sounds, because it is something that I had found myself using iron-ons to make. I've had three different versions of my own cult leader shirt, and I just couldn't find it in the marketplace. And I was like, I'm a weirdo. I know there's other weirdos, true crime fans, that kind of thing like they're out me. So why don't I just publish it? And I even have a toddler version, which I think is hilarious. <laughs> my toddler versus. So it started with that. And then I really liked this sign that says, it's a quote from Dr. Bob. He's like a New Orleans person. It's all y'all are welcome, but you got to act right. And I'm a Northerner. I live in the Chicago area. Y'all is not typically in my vocabulary, but I wanted it for my house. So I used print on demand to make it. And in the past month, I've gotten over 50 sales and $1,800 in profit from it. 50 sales and how much profit? $1,800. And and, and this month, one month? Just in 30 days. Yeah. I thought Etsy was overcrowded and oversaturated. What's going on? You know what? Even it's one of those things. There's not much competition. For that banner in particular, like even if you do a Google search for it, there's only one other company producing a pennant or a sign like it. So I just really lucked out. And a lot of the sales that I'm making, I'm finding our teachers wanting it for their classrooms. Really? I think it's great. It's inclusive. It's, hey, let's, let's, you're you're here, but also let's set some expectations. I could definitely see how it resonates with teachers. And one thing I've been doing is, When someone mentions like, oh, I'm so excited to put it in my classroom, I come back to them and I say, hey, I know that you're going to get a lot of compliments. If you're comfortable sharing what's the name of your school, I'm happy to create like a 10% off promo code for like your school and we'll make it like valid till Halloween. And I've even seen people like come back with that. Like other teachers will buy it. Yeah. That's pretty cool. If you use the word y'all, you have a pretty good chance of increasing the likelihood of someone buying it. If you're in the North, is that what you're saying? I've only gotten a couple sales in Illinois. It's mostly Kentucky, Tennessee, and Georgia is where I see a lot. Okay. But y'all could be a good keyword for the time being. Like if you want to put a sign out there, y'all could help you. Oh yeah. There's even a whole like home decor style called (laughs) y'alternative. Yeah. Nice. So how many products do you have on your store right now? I think I have about 45 or 60 around there. Okay. So are you willing to share gross sales in a month? Nothing to hide. Yeah. Okay. See how I can log in. I'm always on it. Is this a screen share thing? Yeah. If you want to, if you want to share, you can. Yeah. Yeah. This is all access here. Yeah. I'm a training girly. So I'm always down for screen share. Yeah. So as you're doing that, just a little back, a little bit of background. So you have a day job, right? Yeah. And you're in the marketing world. Do you yeah. want to share a little bit about what type of marketing? What do you do just in terms of just very general? Yeah, I, I do marketing for mortgage. So loan officers, I help them. Cool. Cool. Help. They need help, don't they? <laughs> they? It's one of the most passionate jobs I've ever seen. It is the most terrifying part of buying a home. And I know because I just bought this house, my first home, three months ago. And it is such an emotional process to begin with. And we're always told not to share our finances with anyone. 
So it needs to be someone that you can trust and building that trust is so hard because we don't want to give our social security number away to anyone. Everyone like freaks you out in the mortgage process about stealing your information or fraud. So you really need that foundation. And I can't tell you how many times like I called our loan officer like crying and I'm in the industry. I always like joke about people who I acted. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much that goes into the process that we can maybe touch on later. Yeah. Some of the things that maybe you would share or learn or advice, but we'll get to that in just a little bit. Yeah. So your okay. store, do you want to share? Yeah, I got you. Okay. Got okay. Done. You should have permissions to share. Oh, here we go. You got it. So how many listings do I have today? It's been slow the past two days, which I'm grateful for a pause. <laughs> Especially, so I have 64 active listings. Okay, cool. Cool. So you mentioned that one product selling 50 at a dollar amount. Like what's the typical amount of sales right now in terms of units or dollars or whatever that's going on right now? I've been getting about three to five sales a day. So anywhere between 117 to $175 in sales. And here's just this month. So it's not even last 30 days. So wait, three to five sales a day, which then translated to what dollars? The past 27 days, $1,800. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Cool. cool. Okay. Okay. And this is obviously not your day job. This is on the side. Yeah. I'm side right. hustle. How long ago did you start? Here, let's even look. It'll tell me here. Like when I started. Let's look at all time. And let's look at maybe this year. It was this year. I started the shop oh. in March. March. Damn. Damn. Okay. Okay. And just gradually things have been continuing to grow. Yeah. And this month it really exploded. Okay. So two things like right here, right now, what would you say is the number one reason why, because you've basically more than doubled your revenue or visits from this month to last month. Like why, yeah. how, how does that happen? Why is that happening? It's timing and lack of competition. I don't expect this banner to be selling this much because a lot of my audience is teachers preparing for their classrooms. That's probably 75% of what I've heard. So this is different than traditional back to school activities, back to school decorations, teacher decorations. There's not a really big market for it. And there's only one other competitor who has a banner like this and they sell theirs for 60 and mine is $39. When I first saw it for 60, I personally thought that is not in my budget. That is not accessible. But I didn't even think at the time that it was for teachers. And I originally started with as $35 and I upped the price because I was eating like nearly $7 in shipping and that. So I added it for, so we split the shipping. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah. when did that banner or that poster, when did that become a thing, our product on, on your store? Was that recent or after we, months ago or? It was when we moved in here. So probably late May. Okay. So right thing, right time, whatever, yeah. but you don't get there, right? Until you have done the previous work. In, yeah. in the very beginning. So what was the, what are some of the other things that you've learned along the way from the very beginning that you think people need to know if they wanted to start their own store in their own niche or whatever? I would say to do something that you're interested in. I'm not a football person, never have been, even though my husband played college football, it's just not for me. So you'll never see be trying to talk about football stuff. I have a son. I'm not probably going to put like girl mom things. I'm going to stand behind the products that resonate with me that I also see a gap for in the market because that's what I shop on Etsy for is things that I can't find at Target. Right. And that's going to stay true to me and my brand because that's, this is, I've got an LLC now with this. Like I have an EIN, like I'm going to take this to TikTok shop and Instagram shopping and Facebook marketplace. So like it needs to be, it needs to be relevant with me. It needs to resonate with me as a brand and not just someone who sells what they can get their hands on. So 
from the very beginning, like, why did you even go down of all the things you can do with your time or try to be able to build a business or make a product and make money? Why did you choose this route versus other ones? I did this because it's something that I have control over designs for. I don't have to keep inventory or hold on to product. That was something that I'm definitely like a craft hoarder. Like I'll start a craft and then I'll move on to the next hobby. So when we moved into this house, I had to get rid of like everything. And it was just, yeah, I didn't want to have this passion idea that turned into something that didn't work out. So I was like, hey, there's no inventory clogging up our house. I only pay for what I sell. I'm not hoarding or stocking anything. And if I change my mind, I can close the store and publishing a product is only 20 cents. So I'm already not doing it. So what do I have to lose? Oh, yeah. Did you have anybody that you knew that was doing it? What kind of resources did you use to guide you along the way to get it going? I saw a couple of things about it on like TikTok. And I was like, what's this? I'm definitely not like a drop ship bro or anything like that. It's not really something for me. And I always have these ideas and I figure why not just try it? It wasn't like a large upfront investment. Now it's turned into Printify Premium and needing QuickBooks and filing an LLC. So I'm just investing that all back in there. But at the time I was like, we were just buying a house and I was scared that if I were to lose my day job, what would happen? Or I had no idea what utilities would be for our house. Going from a two bedroom apartment to a four bedroom house has definitely been a shock for utilities. So I just thought, how can I make extra money? That's not taking on a second job outside the house when I have a toddler of my own. Yeah. Yeah. Kids are expensive. That's for sure. Oh gosh, yes. uh, in terms of time, how would you analyze either hours per week or day or when, like, when do you spend time on this? I maybe do about half an hour a day as I get an order I make sure that I send them a message like, Hey, I'm taking care of it. Here's my contact information, reach out along the way. I think that's one thing that I see in like my readings is people talking about how communicative I am during the process of buying. And that's something that I have control over. So I make that something that I prioritize. Like I let them know when it's being sent to production. The second I got it, I let them know the second tracking is available. And I let them know, Hey, it's being delivered today. Look out for it. It's going to say this, it's going to have this on it. Please leave me a review. So tracking is a pain in the butt, but I keep it all on a spreadsheet. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, I have a really intensive Google doc. <laughs> <a> couple hours. <laughs> So if you're, if you are shipping a banner, right, do you use USPS, UP, what, what type of shipping do you is use or do you have control over that or? I don't Printify uses. So like the warehouse MWW, they use DHL. Oh, okay. And that hasn't been much of an issue yet. I think it's $7 for shipping and it comes in a really nice like cardboard tube. And like, I got one for myself. So I wanted to make sure that quality was there as well. I didn't want it to be like left in the rain in a paper bag. I was really grateful when I ordered one for myself first, how it turned out. Gotcha. So if I put an order in today, what kind of time frame is it typically being shipped out or received? At the same time as between one and three days. Oh, so you're, so the person could be getting it in how many days? They get it within about a week. Week. Okay. Okay. Cool. I get it. I immediately send it within an hour. It's to the printer. I have it automate from Etsy into printer printify and I have my credit card on file. So I get points for all of this. And then yeah, the printer prints it. Sometimes they turn around some same day. Sometimes I've seen it take up to three days. It might, they also go through like a quality control to make sure that's printed. It looks good. And they're proud of it as well. And then shipping. That can take any time. I've seen them take as short as three days, as long as a week. Gotcha. Yeah. So you keep using the word printify. So obviously I know what this is, but for listeners out there that maybe want to learn more about this. So yeah. printify basically produces the product that you've designed. You can design it in the shop. They produce it and then it connects with Etsy. So if someone puts an order in connects to Printify and then stuff happens. Kind of. So up? Printify is a platform that you can use for multiple e-commerce sites that are print on demand. 
they source two different printers. So there's ones that you hear about like Swift Pod, which is a print on demand or MW. So you can even see what their typical printing times for products are and they vary um, and what their costs are. Anytime there's like even a cost update, you get sent like a couple of notifications in a spreadsheet. So it's kind of like a liaison between you and a physical printer. And what I like about that is I then have access to more products. I usually use Swift Pod for t-shirts and sweatshirts because pricing is lower on the quality products that I like. But for this, for home decor or anything like pillows, I use another printer for that because they carry it. Gotcha. And so in Printify, you can upload your designs, pick the colors, write the descriptions, as well as like set shipping profiles that you can standardize and then publish it from there. That'll push into Etsy. Once I'm in Etsy, that's where I go through and I edit specific Etsy fields, like making sure that I let my consumers know that this is going to be like I use a production partner for printing on this because they can close your store if you don't put that. Yeah. Can, can you repeat that. that again? If you don't put what exactly? So if you're mm -hmm. using like a print on demand service and on every product, you're not specifically saying because it defaults to this is a handmade item by me. And the design is mine, but the, I didn't sew this t-shirt. I don't have it in my garage. I'm not standing there with a the printing press. You violate Etsy terms and service if you don't put that in there. And the last thing I want to do is be lazy, not click one button that's allowed for me to click. And they're on for a reason to have them close my store. I'm a rule follower. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. so if they were to do that, just hypothetically speaking, then do you have to appeal it or your store shut down or that product? I don't know what that process would be because I don't get myself into it, but it's good. Something like to remember, especially as you're thinking about like copywritten materials as well. Like I know there's a lot of Disney folks out there, but you don't want to mess with the mouse. No. <laughs> I'm a former cast member of Disney, so I can say these kind of things. Like hey, say what? Yeah, he used to work at Disney World. So there's legal teams are out there to protect oh, yeah. their brand. And their, so you got to make sure that you might be excited for your Disney vacation and want to get everyone matching t-shirts with their name on it, but also make sure that, you know, that if you're a seller for that, you're putting yourself in legal liability. And as a sole proprietor outside of an LLC or something, I wouldn't recommend it from a compliance perspective. So I think Pete says Mickey the Mouse. He doesn't say Mickey Mouse. I think he says Mickey the Mouse. I think something <laughs> like that. So Mickey Mouse, that's copywritten. If someone put a shirt out that says Mickey the Mouse, does that violate? I think it's fine because there's also, there was that, who was that? It was like a rat in like the 80s that like, it was like pop culture. Maybe it was 80s, maybe it was 70s. He was like a rat king. He looked like trashy version of Mickey Mouse. Oh. The only thing that's coming to my mind is rat rat Ratatouille, but... Yeah. Know. So yeah, you just got to make sure don't step on anyone's toes. Don't rip off anyone's ideas. Like you're a beautiful creative mind. Take your time and make sure like there's tons. If you want to sell canvases of art, like the Met Gallery has free downloads for open access of wide range pictures. There are so many options for you to not break copyright infringement laws, but like you're better than that. Are there any other things like that, that somebody should be aware of in terms of protecting themselves or certain rules to be aware of? Something that I made a mistake in, in the beginning was I had all of the funds, like from when Printify would ship an order, come out of my checking and then anything they paid me go into my savings. And I missed out probably... $1,500 worth of credit card points I could have been getting. So that was definitely something I do see people who are like, oh man, I'm so excited. I'm going to make $26,000 in a week or something like that. Personally, my credit card can't handle that. So I don't want that kind of success. If I do, that's fine. But I definitely, there were days that like, 
my rent was due the next day and I just had an extra $600 go out of my account. And I was like, oh no. So I would say definitely make sure that like you're keeping your personal finances as separate as possible. But if you need that time to build business, figure it out yourself, but definitely have a little nest egg. If you're living paycheck to paycheck, I am sometimes still, but if you have $40 in your bank account, this probably isn't the day to launch it and hope that you make a million dollars. Yeah. So if somebody wanted to start this out, what would they, what would be the first thing that they would do or start working? The first thing would be to create an Etsy store. And so in your Etsy profile, you can just open a shop. So make sure that name is available. Another thing I would do too, is make sure that business name is available in your state. There's a free lookup in every state for the registered business or an LLC. And also make sure that just in case that like you can buy that web domain. So like I have kclater.com. And if you go to that, it points to my Etsy store. Um, so I want to make sure that I'm not stepping on any toes of registered businesses. And also that anyone who Googles something related to my business goes to me. Cool. So I do that and then set up a Printify account and have them talk to each other. Cool. Okay. So you're there. Now you got this stuff set up. You have, you know, if, if you have a, a domain name and a name of a business, that means you probably got an idea of what you're trying to do in terms of your designs or your niche. Is it niche or niche? I hear it both I ways. No, I use them like both ways. Cause I don't always want to be wrong. Maybe I should you, just go all in. You know what? I don't like that word. I'm not going to use it anymore. What's a better word for niche? This I don't like the word. Your lane, your product, your, your lane, vibe. Your product, your vibe. Okay, let's think of another. Let's think of our own word here. Before the end of this, let's think of an actual cool word that we can use instead okay. of niche. Yeah. And if we don't think of one, okay. But we, at least we just said it out. At least I said it out loud. I don't like the word. Yeah. Okay. What do you use to say, hey, you know what? Like, I have an idea. I'm going to cross check it, or I want to see if this is going to work or what, like, where do you get your ideas from in terms of designs or what lane to go down in terms of, I look at some of your t-shirts and I, I see the cult leader one, homebody. I wasn't finished speaking. That makes me laugh, et cetera. There's a lot on here that are pretty cool. What's your thought process on just the inspiration, the designs, the all that stuff? Yeah, for sure. I usually gather them a lot from... Pinterest, Instagram, and I also have ADHD and autism. So I have a pretty creative brain that's not always organized. So I will just throw things down into a note. Like I definitely want to take like this pennant and turn it into a doormat because I think that would resonate. Or cult leader might be a better coffee cup because not everyone wants to walk around with that on their shirt, but on a Zoom call, they can lift it. So it's something that I am always trying to tweak and figure out. And it doesn't hurt to spend 20 cents to find out if it works especially with Christmas holiday planning coming up. That's definitely something I want to make sure that I have product available that's giftable for my store. It started out being just t-shirts. And then I expanded it being like, why am I limiting myself when I am a multi-passionate person and get excited about new and different things? So I actually dropped the T's in my store name so that I can accommodate like, at least if it's just this, it's a brand. Okay. So I actually started with a niche, like this is going to be my one product and I got bored of it myself personally. So I opened it up, which is rare. They usually tell people to funnel it down to your target audience. So I do have like true crime sections because I'm a true crime fan. I, as a mom, I have a whole section called like little humans because that's the kids section. That's where you're going to find your kids gifts. Yeah. So I find what is relevant with me and organize it that way. I'm a big fan of mental health advocacy. So that's why I have a whole section called mental health is cool. I like that. I like that. Yeah. It goes back to the whole thing, but Hey, everybody's got a little bit of crazy. You know, it's just a matter of like where you are on the, on, on the spectrum. Like y'all got our own shit. Don't think that you don't have shit. You all do. It's just do oh, yeah. talk about it. Is it obvious to other people? Like it's just, it's a range, right? Yeah. Okay, what's the most fun design that you made? Oh, I really, there's a toddler t-shirt. That's just a picture of bananas and it says that's, and that's bananas. And that's things that like little kids like saying, like, even if they don't understand what the shirt says, 
all kids I know like bananas and they're excited to wear a shirt with bananas on it. It's like a fruit that everyone can identify. And that one's actually gotten a lot of purchases too. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. There's the till death, the two skulls on it. Oh yeah. That's something I wanted originally for my wedding last year. Like I was like, listen, this is till death. Okay. We need to make this really serious. And I was actually thinking about hanging that over our bed. <laughs> Unconventional weddings right now are very trending on Etsy. So that was something that I decided to test. I'm also still, as someone who got married last year, I'm still in all those Facebook groups. So I said, hey, let me post them in here and be like, hey, you guys inspired me. So if you're a true crime fan who's getting married, if you're a wedding murderino, this might be your vibe. The, the 20 cents thing. Can you say that again? What did you say? Test something out for 20 cents? What was that? Yeah. So Etsy's listing fee is 20 cents. So to post something, it costs uh, you 20 cents. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So I was just talking to somebody about this earlier today. And this has to do with YouTube. So it's just an analogy. Yeah. Like I was telling somebody some advice on, okay, yo, your YouTube channel, you've got your long form video and you got your shorts, right? Actually, oh, shoot. We've been talking with your store up. We can't see your, I can't, we can't see our faces here. Shoot. We've been talking without our faces on here. Damn. Exactly. We can go back if you need. No, it's all I was good. wondering when you're going to have me stop sharing. I'm like, maybe we're just going to do that. I was just, I was going down the lane. Hey, you know what? You have 15 videos out there. You have one subscriber, a few views. You're not, you're not doing any shorts. Like the shorts are going to get traction to your page, get people to even know what it is. And then over time, you'll be able to get your following and then be able to hopefully get some more eyes on your long form video. And hopefully if you're, if it's good enough, good content and got some good hooks, then you can get that watch time and then build your channel. How do you even get somebody to know where your page is or what, like, how do you get somebody to start out to then to know where, where and what your product is? I have, that's definitely something social media wise that I need to improve upon. I have caseyleader.com, but I also have TikTok, Instagram, a Facebook business page. So I like the Facebook and Instagram because you can post reels from the business platform and also have your shop linked. And I also like it because then I'm not constantly spamming my personal friends and family with things they might not be interested in. I did it twice to make sure they knew and were aware and had an opportunity to follow me. But I am also not going to become my own spam robot. I'm going to post it on my professional account. So are you saying that the initial traction you got was by putting stuff out there on social media? Yeah. I said, Hey, this is something that I've thought about doing for a long time. Like I want to wear shirts that say cult leader on them. And like, even when I was pregnant, like people thought it, I, everywhere in public, people thought it was the funniest thing. So you go to a, a concert, people are like, cool shirt. So I'd wear that everywhere. And then I was like, everyone wants this shirt. I always get compliments on it. So I put it out there like, hey, if you guys like this stuff, this is where you can buy it instead of just telling me you like it or you want it. Like you say you want this shirt, come by. Right. Hey, please. Here's where it is. And if you guys have, that was another thing too. I made sure people knew if you have any custom design requests, if you're looking for matching t-shirts for a daycare, like I talked about it. Hey, this is something that I'm really excited about. If you need anything, please ask me first. I had a friend reach out. She wanted, there was like a TikTok video that went around. There was this enormous snapping turtle in Chicago that was like post on a rock and these guys were kayaking and they saw they're like, oh, look at it. It's like thick, but strong. And my friend, it was like the silliest video of this huge snapping turtle. And so I said, hey, she came out to me. She's like, hey, I'm going to the Beyonce concert. I want a shirt with a picture of a snapping turtle on it that says thick but strong. <clears throat> and I was like, say less, give me 10 minutes. <laughs> and I put it on my store and she bought it. So if you have an idea, yeah, I can help you make it. It's going to save you time instead of like going to Michael's or trying to learn how to use a cricket. Like I can have this to your house in five days. My mother-in-law has that cric the cricket. She's, I have one. Yeah, it's, she's doing it. It's tricky. Yeah. Okay. So Facebook, is it, is your KC letter page, is it separate from personal? Is it together or how do you have it? So up? your business page is connected through your 
you need your personal page to be an admin on a business page. So if you're not a current Facebook user, you do have to have a personal account to create a business page separately. But you're going to want to do that because that's where you can link your shop. That's where you can have ads that you can run if you choose to. That's where you can see impressions on anything that you put up there. If you're going to spend your time on doing something, you want those metrics. You want to be able to see what's working and what's not. What am I doing right? And what am I totally wrong about? Yes, the analytics. They yeah, are so cool. that's my personal page. And you can see it's Casey Leader because that was my derby name. And then if you go to businesses, if you search Facebook for Casey Leader, it's like a purple icon. Put a space in between the two. So it should be under businesses. You're under people. Uh, I thought I can. Okay, hold on. I am not a tech. It's not good. Do you see this? Or am yeah, I go to posts or pages. It would be pages. My bad. Boom. Boom. Okay. Where is it at? It's a is there a link on your personal page? No, I can send it to you for sure. Let me pull it up. And the reason why I asked and even bring this up yeah. is everyone wants to be able to show the finished product. Okay. This person's a millionaire and they did this X, Y, Z, but you're in the middle of your journey and you're going to be in a year from now, way ahead of where you are today. Cause you're going to keep working and keep growing and keep learning things. It's like, people are going to be at different points of their journey, especially someone that wants to start out. It's okay. What is somebody doing right here, right now to be able to get traction in their business? And there's just so much out there. That's a, yeah, this person's telling their story, but it's the end product. Yeah. And it's like, you're not going to highlight the stuff that you probably did at the beginning. And that's the most important in my opinion, because so many people start something and, and they don't see results and they stop. It's like, you keep on going. Yeah. My page it's is actually KC Elater Co because KC Elater was taken. There's a designer for drag queens who uses KC Elater as well. Gotcha. Okay. 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 So boom, you have this and then you can send somebody a link to your person, your business page in theory. Mm -hmm. and you can get the information, get links and all that stuff. Okay, cool. Etsy also does ads and they do I'm, yes. like Pinterest. I've never been on Pinterest's website. My wife has it. Yeah. I don't know nothing about Pinterest. So is Etsy ads, Pinterest, is that a way to be able to market your stuff or do you do that? You could. I haven't paid for any Etsy ads because they say that they have a 4% conversion and that's what I already have on my store. Um, so I don't see a value in spending money to make money, but Etsy also has a program that you can opt into for free that if they'll put you in like Facebook carousels or Google carousels as well. When I Googled my, all y'all are welcome pennant, I saw the sponsored content at the top, one of my products. And then right below it, I saw all of my products. If you buy through that carousel, that's Etsy promoting your product via a Google search and you pay on the back end if someone buys it. So I think for mine, for my banners, it costs a lot. I think it's 15% of the products. So I end up paying about five or $6 for everyone that's sold, but also it's a sale I wouldn't have made before. So as much as I see that like smaller profit margin of $10, I go, oh, I don't like that. I still am like grateful it's here. Yeah. And people check out as a guest sometimes. So communication isn't always as responsive on their end versus if someone buys naturally through Etsy. But I also don't take that personally either. I'm still doing my job and communicating with them. Okay. So we want to go in a little bit of a different year for a second. Yeah. So I get excited when I see this because, okay, you started earlier this year and then yeah. now you're like making like real money, like not like yeah. pennies, like this is like real money. And like, it's yeah. fast forward the clock, like things will continue to grow and compound as more successes and clients and repeat clients and all that stuff. So what is, what's something you're working on right now uh, or want to work on next? Yeah. Uh, you think it's going to be helpful for the, uh, the growth? Right now, I think more of my brand is cute, spooky home decor like more murderino focus. So looking for like witchy vibes of stuff that I see a gap for in the market. I like myself personally, and I'm going to roll that into fall products. I did just today put a chicken sweatshirt in my store because chicken sweatshirt has been okay. trending 650% higher on Etsy because I guess Miranda Lambert wore a t-shirt 
the head chicken on it. Really? So more seasonal stuff. I, I get from t-shirts more into sweatshirts, things that are relevant. And then I'm going to be working on. So that's what I'm working on now is like cool witchy stuff. Again, stuff that isn't available at Target. Yeah. And so, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. My please. mother-in-law, her license plate says ghost. What does it say? Go for go. I forget. It's got go, the word ghost on them with a couple of back. And it's what she likes that kind of stuff. The building that I'm in here in Kirkwood, we have some people that run the lower space out and she's on the same plane. Uh, and the more I'm aware of it, the more I, I know people that are all, there are people out there that like that with ghost hunting and witch hunting and it's all in fun, right? I love it. Love I love part. ghost hunting stuff. I live in a hundred year old house, doors open and close on their own. And I just say, hi, Bill. And that's the last owner's name. I don't know if he's still here, but I know he passed away. So I just always am like, hello, I hear you. Because... <laughs> My husband doesn't believe in ghosts. I'm like, but what if you're wrong? What if we're wrong? Okay. What if? We used to think aliens weren't real till yesterday. <laughs> like, I honestly, like, I saw some of the clips from the former U intelligence person, but I didn't know what else was going on besides that. Yeah. Like, what else was posted that came out? Or was that the only thing? Or what else? What else? What else am I missing? We had all these unidentified flying objects that just stopped all of a sudden. Remember we heard about new ones like every couple days. And then I was like, I don't know if it's, I'm not like a news conspiracy person. I used to write for the Chicago Tribune, but I'm not someone who's, oh, they're distracting you. But what was really going on? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I posted something yesterday and I had zero comments and zero views on it on Facebook. And I was really disappointed in it. Actually, you know, yeah, I was disappointed in it. And this is the first time I've done this, but like this day in life, Ronnie, Le LeBron James's son yeah. had a cardiac arrest. I heard about that. That happened. Jalen Brown with the Celtics, who's a good player, but probably like most people that are NBA fans, I know he's not like the guy. He's like the number two player on the Celtics, but he got like the highest contract in the history of NBA, $304 million, $60 million a year. Oh, yeah. um, so there were four things, Bronny, Jalen Brown. I don't want to get political. I, I, that's not me. Yeah. You know, a person that I see every side of every angle of every coin. So I'll listen to anybody. I have my own beliefs on stuff, but it, whatever. But there was a death that happened in Martha's Vineyard and happened to have a former president's name attached to it. There was another president's uh, family member that had stuff going on with fraudulent stuff with, the, with a, a plea bargain or whatever. I posted yeah. out there. I got and I got no no comments. And that's the algorithm, right? And now I'm blanking on where I was going with this. There was a reason yeah, I was going down this path, and I'm blanking on it. Jazzy, I'm sorry, bro. Jazzy, when you're editing this, I'm so sorry that I forgot. But my point is that yes, there are ghosts out there, or there may not yeah. be ghosts. We don't know. But what if? No, that's how I feel. I might not believe in that religion, but I'll still respect it. Because what if I'm wrong? Seriously, seriously, I'm wrong about a lot. <laughs> look at this kind of fast forward in the clock right yeah and we're talking about growth and building this out at what point i'm to say if but when you grow this out when do you quit your day job when do you not need to have a day job oh never Ooh, i like it I i'm like a it. never person no i've always had two or three jobs at a time i grew up with like intermittent homelessness and I know that the only thing I can rely on is myself. So this is, but I will always let someone else pay for half of my health insurance. I will always take that, that paycheck when it comes and serve people in my role, because I'm never going to have a gap in my resume that I'm going to have to explain. Totally. But what, what if your store is making a million dollars? That's great. It might not do that the next day. Ooh, interesting. Interesting. Yeah, but I can invest it in things that matter to me. That's my child's savings account. That's a trust. That's, I came from homelessness. So I know that building generational wealth is what's up. And yeah, I don't quit my day job, but I might ask for accommodations. I might be able to pick and choose more so what I want in my day job, right? I want to have that flexibility, but I'm never going to quit my day job. Okay. So you use the word, you use two, two phrases that I want to dig into. One, you said generational wealth. Yeah. Which when I see that, I, I know what that means because that's where I believe in where I want to go. 
for other people, they may not know what that means or they, they may not believe it's possible. Yeah. You just said that you came from homelessness and now you're marching towards financial freedom. That's important to you. Yeah. As a child. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. As a kid, there were multiple times in which we were evicted from apartments and we didn't have anything. And I knew that I never wanted that to happen to me. So I always had two jobs. If someone cuts me, at least I have this. And I learned that no one can take away your experience and no one can take away what you choose to live for yourself. Like they can take away your home, they can take away your clothes, but they can't take away your education. They can't take away your drive and they can't take away like your hustle. That's something no one can get out of you. So I've always worked my butt off in many ways to get to where I am, make sure I paid rent, paid it early. And I have a three-year-old and we just bought our first house. And I want to make sure that nothing like that ever happens to him. I want him to be like, oh, mom, I was thinking about investing, not like asking if he can have dinner. So I want him to learn what I thought was a privilege to learn what normal is for most people because not everyone has normal. Your girl might get emotional. Sorry to cut you off, but like your reaction to that is a choice, right? Because there's other people that may have a similar circumstance in some regard, right? But they may either decide or go down a different path and not that way. I dealt with it in a lot of different ways. My mom was a heavy drinker and I saw her prioritize alcohol over other things. And I too fell into an alcohol addiction. And five years ago, I looked in the mirror and I saw my mom. It was my face, but it looked like her when I was drinking. And I said, I don't want to see her ever again. And that was the last day I drank. It was St. Patrick's Day. And... I haven't seen her since. And I was like, okay, at the time I had like a 490 credit score. And I thought that's not bad because I still have this $500 Capital One card. Like I can still get an auto loan if I need one. I didn't think that was a problem. And then I sobered up, got my credit together, paid debts and was like, okay, Jay-Z says it. He's yeah, you can have a band, but credit is what's worth more or something like that. Yep. Yeah. That's what I was like, oh crap, that's true. So you you illustrated that moment, right? Looking in the mirror. Do you want to share a little bit about what was going on that was pushing you down that lane of not being where you want to be from a emotional, circumstantial standpoint? Yeah, I'd worked a lot of like contract and creative role jobs and that It's great to have a job for six months, nine months, but I was just bouncing company to company and I was hitting my thirties and I was like, I have no stability. I have friends who are making double, triple what I am. Like I was living in an apartment that only cost like $1,200 a month and I was still having a hard time ends meeting. And I thought, I literally thought people who had a fridge that made ice, well, this is a sign of wealth. And I was just I had for a long time, such like a victim mindset of, oh, those people have it better than me. Oh, they don't understand. I have student loans because like your girl pays a lot in student loans and complaining wasn't getting me anywhere and no one wanted to join my pity party. So I decided to shut up about it and get, you know. Yeah. And like I said before, we all have our own shit. Yeah. Yeah. To get to a point and then, okay, no, this is, I'm done with this. And then to do it and then go, because it's easy to go and then fall backwards and then get stuck again, right? But to keep going, but to keep on going and yeah, you have setbacks, setbacks, keep going. Like that to me, like the sum of all the parts become way more than the individual pieces. And like me personally, like I've explained this to a few people in, in my circle. It's like, I've achieve certain things. I have some real estate stuff. I have other things going on. Like from the outside, like you may see certain things or quote unquote successful. And stuff. But on the inside, there's a burning pile of shit going on in some days, right? Like, yeah. Trying to figure shit out. We are all trash. Absolutely. But what keeps me going is like, okay, I know that if I just keep on going, that the sum, the sum of the pieces will become way greater than the individual pieces. That, that kind of mindset. Yeah. And hey, it's like... Um... I garden a lot. I don't, I'm a big gardener, huge plant lady. And I don't put, like, I think if I put a seed in the ground, 
I'm not going to just dig it up every day to see if it's growing. Like you got to have a little patience and keep watering it and keep going and like, just give it hope. And sometimes the dumbest thing, I feel like I make the most sales when I'm working in my yard. Like, I swear to God, when I'm not thinking about it, it's okay. Those seeds that I have planted are sowing and it's literally just me sweating in my garden, but I feel like that's when my Apple watch is like, like you made a sale, ching, and it's, and that almost makes me want to go weed the yard more, right? (laughs) Well, if I just stop thinking about it, I'll get to it. And I think, yeah, you just got to make sure that you're putting in that work and laying that foundation, even if it's occasionally, like sometimes I'll put my son to bed and then I'll be like, okay, let's log in and do all my daily messages because that's what I committed to. So the people around you, because like one of the things I always talk about the saying, you can bring a horse to water, but you can't make them drink, whatever, however the saying is. You're right now, you're on this path or you're doing some pretty cool stuff. And and that's what we're talking about, because we're on this lane talking about Etsy and talking about side hustles and generating income, all that stuff. Are people around your your network, are they seeing this? Are are people asking you questions about this stuff? Yeah, they are. They're like, wait, how did you, like, I'll be at, we were at a Cubs game and my phone went off two or three times and our friend that we went to the Cubs game with was like, what is that? And I was like, I just made 150 bucks. And she was like, shut up. What is it? So I told her about it. Everyone that has a birthday coming up, all toddler birthday parties, they're all getting different t-shirts from my shop because it's out there. If they take a picture, cool. If they have my Christmas presents, I get this stuff at cost. So you're getting it because that's going to be the cheapest option for me. And then I have promotional branding. If anyone on social media reaches out to my brand and says, oh my gosh, I'd love to do your product. Or they say, I like this. I'm like, cool. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a 20% discount code if you want to promote it, but that's it. Like you can buy my product, but I'm not just giving it away for free. I'm not paying you to do sponsored ads. Like I work to get where I am. And if you want, here's an incentive, but yeah, you're not Kim Kardashian and I don't have Kardashian money. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's something to be said too about the process, like going about it the way that you want to go about it and not skipping the steps or cutting corners and you know, doing it the way you want to do it too. My, our, my realtor, I gave her a shirt that says home girl. Cause that was like my closing gift to her. Here you go. She wears it all the time. She tags my shop in it. Cause she knows. That's awesome. So when you say Cubs game, like you were, it was a Cardinals Cubs game and you were rooting for the Cardinals, right? <laughs> I am a Chicagoan. My son's first words were go, cub, go. I have a sister named Addison. My dad's dog is named Santo. So there's, I'm not allowed to like any other baseball team. It's like, I, I love my family. I'm not personally interested in baseball. It's nine people against one. That seems like really terrible odds. Man, Thanks. might as well go with the grain on that one, right? Yeah. Um, I love that we're talking about this and digging into a little bit of the personal side of things because again, at the end of the day, we're not robots. Baseball yeah. players are not robots. CEOs are not robots. Like we all have our own shit. And some people don't want to talk about it. I'm okay talking about whatever. But sometimes it's, it's good to be able to let people know, hey, at the end of the day, people go through shit, ups and downs. And that's just part of the journey. Are there, is there any other piece of advice that you would give to somebody, aspiring entrepreneur or whatever else? Maybe in this lane, maybe not this lane. If you're thinking about it, if you're talking about it, if it makes you excited, just do it. What do you got to lose? I'd rather be on my deathbed saying that didn't work out for me than saying, I wish I would have. Nothing to lose. What do you got to lose? You're already not doing it. Damn, damn. I didn't know how to roller skate when I started pulling roller derby. I was at tryouts and they're like, you're terrible, but you have a good attitude. And I was like, thank you. No shit. (laughs) I had no idea what I was doing. How long did you do that? I did that for five years. Holy shit. Yeah. Like, do you make money doing that? I did not. It was a hobby at the time. But yeah, we were like nationally ranked travel teams. Got a couple of cultures. Throwing like some bows. Cards. Yeah. Like I'm a strong lady. Damn, uh, damn. But yeah. yeah. I thought it was, it was cool. And I said, I'm going to try it. <laughs> Whatever. I've already got flag roller derby. <laughs> Is there any video? Is there any video out there on the interwebs? I can probably send you a photo. Oh, okay. Okay. Maybe we'll use that for the cover art. I'm just kidding. All y'all are welcome, but you gotta act right. So kids are gonna see this in their classrooms this yeah. fall. A lot of them, yeah. In Tennessee, Kentucky. 
Oh, tons of them. Here, let's cool. see. There's, cool. I've had one order in Canada, Indiana, Kentucky, North Carolina, Ohio, New Jersey, Alabama, West Virginia, Florida, Kansas, California, Texas. This is nationwide. All right, kids, get ready. You better act. You better act you right. Every day. Yeah. Cool. So next time we catch up yeah, down the road, get you on the, on, on the show. Dig into some numbers, dig into some progress, dig into some tips. Yeah. Is there a goal that you want to be able to do or achieve before the end of the year? I'm going to make sure I pay off this credit card that I'm using. <laughs> One nice thing is like Etsy pays you weekly. So I'm just taking all that profit right now and throwing it on that credit card. So when the credit card's down to zero, I'm going to be like, okay, we're good. And I should be registered a registered business in my county by then because I have my LC and my EIN. I should be a registered business because then I can be on TikTok shop. Oh. So oh. I think that's going to be big, especially now that TikTok has like a photo swipe. So I don't have to have as much video content. Yeah. Okay. Those are things that I was not aware of. I'm not a big TikTok person. I haven't gone down that rabbit hole yet. I have it. Don't know. Yeah. Okay. We got some stuff. To I got about. it in the pandemic to just watch people dance. And now most of what my TikTok is like learning like Microsoft tricks and tricks. <laughs> that's, that's been my algorithm, but I often get advertised like clothing and see like promotions, but I'm like, nah, I'm already not doing it. It takes five minutes. Who cares? Just try it. What do you have? You can always delete it if you're embarrassed. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Okay. Yeah. We got a lot to catch up on, on for the next time. So again, where can people find you? Can you spot off for us? Sure. Caseyalater.com. That's C-A-S-E-Y-A-L-A-T-E-R.com. Cool. Cool. Thank you so much for making time for us today and looking forward to catching up soon. Absolutely. Bye-bye. See ya. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Strive for 25 podcast. 